So I'd like to talk to you today about uh, an important subject. Uh, I want to make a video of this because I want you to know how deeply I feel about this. And that has to do with whether or not we're going to uh, defund or eliminate our police. And I think it's a it's an interesting discussion, especially when you talk about defunding, meaning other people take over other things like maybe uh, enforcing drug laws or um, dealing with the mentally ill. But still, I think it's a lot better if we talk about let's let's do this final. Let's talk about reimagining the police. How is it that you want your police to operate in the society? I mean, it sounds like well, something we could never have a discussion of. But if we're talking about defunding police, then maybe we can talk about reimagining them as a viable alternative. Is it possible? Well, I think so. I've had some experience in in reimagining police. We reimagined police in in Burnsville. When I was there, we uh, we made public safety officers, not police officers, and uh, they took over fire duties, a small, a small suburb of Minneapolis, it's possible, hired college graduates, and uh, put them in blazers. And uh, so the traditional police moved into this broader definition of police. And when I went to Madison, we changed a very, you know, traditional police department into one that reimagined the role to talk about community-oriented policing. You know, we brought the blazers in there and used those in many cases, a soft approach to heading protest. We integrated the police department. We, it made a big, big difference. We, we did, in fact, reimagine policing in Madison from 1972 on. It's possible. How would that work? Well, <laughs> we would sit down and we would honestly talk with people, elected officials and community leaders. We'd get together with the police and say, look it, this is what we want you to do. We, we want you to be this. We want you to concentrate on this and not on this. Can you do that? Can you, can you be a, a, a more gentle police officer? Uh, make a very commitment to, for example, raising the deadly force standard? Uh, would you really work very closely with us to build the kind of communities we want? Could we demilitarize? Well, we did that in the experimental police district in Madison in the late uh, 1980s. We, we experimented with policing. Um, was it risky? Yeah, it sure was. But the officers bought into this idea. And then at the end of that experimental police district, we had a, a National Institute of Justice study which said that, wow, this is really good not only for the citizens in the South District where the Ameri uh, experimental police uh, district uh, operated out of, but also the officers. They felt better about their job, their concept, and working with people and everything. When we separate police from the people that they are sworn to serve, if we have a gap there, we lose trust, we lose effectiveness, and, and it really is not democratic policing. I, I think there's a way to police this democracy. You know, maybe you have different ideas about it, but I think we need to talk about reimagining what we're doing because right now it isn't working. I have been through all kinds of police reform movements in the 60 years that I've been watching policing and acting as a police officer for 30 of those years, and lo and behold, they didn't stick, they didn't work. So, it, so it, might be, it might be a rough situation in which, you know, the police, police line up. And to a very small extent that happened in Burnsville. Here, here, here's the idea. I said, no, nah, I don't want to do that. And some left the department. And then we hired new people who had the idea. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, he talks about, hey, to be, to be a, 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 an effective organization, you've got to get the bad people off the bus, the people who don't want to do that job, and the good people on and then you can move forward. But the problem is we've had too many people that have challenged this concept of American policing and has come into a kind of a domination game. Um, you can't be an occupying force in a community. It doesn't work. It didn't work in Afghanistan or Iraq and it does not work in American cities. Over 150 years ago, 
it was Sir Robert Peel that came up with his nine principles of policing, and they're just as valid today. And the first one is the police are the people, and the people are the police. And he talks about another one. He said, the more force you use to, to, to do the job, the less su support you have. Yeah, that's true. I know that. You know that. So let's reimagine policing and work together and move forward. This can be a bright day for America. Let's get our hearts behind this. This is very, very important.